Hello friends, welcome to the introductory lecture of the course financial mathematics. So, this is the first lecture and uh, this course as you know uh, it is a 30 hour course and in this course we are going to have the interaction, uh, we will have a lot of uh, uh, problem solving assignments and uh, today we are uh, to start this course uh, that is introduction to financial mathematics. So, that will be the title of today's lecture and the course uh, is certainly that financial mathematics. So, as you know that uh, when we deal with uh, you know finance or we deal with business uh, many a times you need to know the basics and then further you also need to know the different concepts uh, like uh, when you talk about the business. Uh, more importantly you deal with the transactions, you have uh, either either you uh, take the you know you, you go for positive transaction, you go for negative transaction like you may have uh, the receipt, you may have the disbursement. Then uh, you have many things like interest rate, interest which is often coming into picture, uh, you have uh, the concept of uh, you know percentages most of the times. So, you need to know uh, you know that uh, how these uh, different percentages like rate of interest or depreciation or so. So, how they will be you know affecting the uh, transactions that is receipts and disbursements. Then what are the other you know terminologies like mortgage, debt, then you have risk also. So, many aspects we will be covering in this course and uh, uh, today we are going to start. Uh, uh, on that uh, you know in that direction and we will be dealing with the introduction to uh, financial mathematics. So, the main goal of the science of finances uh, consists in studying how the financial agents that is people or organization distribute the resources limited in time. Now, the thing is that uh, 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 when we talk about the you know, finance or science of finance. So, um, certainly as we know that we have limited resources, resources are limited that is why there is a lot of competition. So, you have the limited resources, you have to utilize it, you have to use your resources by you know I mean certainly the raw materials are there, they are converted into final product, then they are to be sold in between you have transactions. So, certainly uh, all, all the fight is because of the limited resources and also time because time also plays an important role. When, when we talk about the business, when we talk about the finance, then time is uh, equally important because whatever uh, as the time progresses, uh, the same thing has different value. So, you have time value of you know money or transactions or so. So, um, in this uh, you know course, uh, what we intend to tell you that as it is written that uh, the main goal of the science of finance which we are going to study. Uh, it will be uh, studying how these financial agents that is uh, whoever is involved uh, the persons or the organizations. So, how they are distributing that resources uh, that is limited in time. Then uh, the solutions uh, made with regard to the time distribution of resources are known as uh, financial decisions. So, in, in between uh, whenever you have uh, certain problems coming or you have a stage where you have to take the decisions. So, uh, you know, when you have to take those decisions or, or the solution which you have come up with uh, regarding the time distribution of the resources, how you are distributing those resources with time. Uh, so, whatever decision you are taking they are the financial uh, decisions and these decisions will be either in terms of expenses or expenditures or earnings or inflows. So, many a times when we talk about the economical aspects or economical terminologies, we talk about uh, receipts or disbursements. Receipt means you are uh, having inflow that is earning. Similarly, disbursements that is your expenditures or expenses. So, these are the synonymous terms and uh, these terms will be used uh, as we go uh, into the course. Financial decisions are based on commensuration of the values of expenses and profit uh, streams. Uh, the problems concerning the time distribution of resources 
are the financial problems. So, certainly as, as we have already discussed that uh, you know you have the expenses and the profit streams that is to be looked into and uh, the problems which are concerning this time distribution. Now, these are the financial problems and you have to overcome it. You have to see that how these uh, you know, problems are to be overcome. Now, a common measure to evaluate the cost or value of the distributed resources is supposed and uh, not on, so certainly you need a medium, uh, you, you need a, you, uh, you know a way uh, how to measure it and for that you have the currency units. So, the currency units can be in terms of anything you may have the rupees, so either you have rupees or dollars or pounds or so. So, you are basically uh, using these uh, you know units currency units to measure uh, to evaluate the uh, cost of the distributed resources because when uh, at the different uh, stages you have the expenses or you have the incomes. So, they are to be basically uh, quantized they are to be quantified and in certain units and, and that is uh, normally the currency units. Uh, certainly, that is the standard way of uh, uh, doing the transaction these days. The other concern factors are consideration of time factor and uncertainty factor. So, as we discussed that uh, when we talk about the uh, transactions in the uh, financial world, then uh, certainly first comes the you know what is the amount of uh, uh, transaction, what is the amount of uh, receipt or disbursement at any point of time. And uh, certainly then, then you can have uh, a mapping at any point of uh, time or, or uh, if you neglect time at the present, then you are uh, thinking uh, of the amount only that how much is the income and how much is the you know, expenditure like that. But equally important is uh, in terms of uh, financial transactions or financial world, equally important is the time because at what time what kind of transaction is going on and it has certainly a bearing on it. So, it is basically evaluated uh, uh, by discussing that we will discuss later that is time value of money. So, as we discussed that we are uh, uh, evaluating in terms of currency units. So, suppose it is money then uh, the, the factor is time factor that is uh, the time at which these transactions are taking place. Uh, that time is important. Whatever you are uh, doing the transaction today uh, and if you are doing the transaction this, this same transaction after one year, they cannot be you know taken at the same because uh, there is a value uh, uh, of the you know time. So, uh, you know the time is important, but what time that transaction has been done because as the time uh, is different, its value will be different. Uh, the 100 rupee which you have uh, you know invested today, uh, it will not be same as 100 rupees uh, after one year. So, uh, what it means to say that uh, when we are trying to evaluate uh, you know the mostly when we are talking about evaluating the alternatives or evaluating any alternative any you know offer. So, at that time uh, the time is important at what time these transactions have taken place. So, time is one important factor and uh, that is why uh, I mean it will, it will be seen that uh, you know, at what time. So, suppose the interest rate is there, so interest rate is what at what time and interest rate also may change. So, basically because of these interest rates because interest is applied because you want to earn on certain uh, of your uh, asset. So, if you have something which you are lending to someone so that he can satisfy his you know goals or he can get satisfaction from that. So, certainly you will not uh, be seeing that you uh, allow someone to get the benefit at uh, your own cost. So, I mean in, in financial uh, terms. So, uh, uh, you have uh, uh, the you will certainly try to earn and that is how the interest uh, terms come into picture and uh, since it comes into picture. So, unless it is 0 if the interest is 0 certainly you know, the with the different time you will have the same value, but if the interest is normally positive value and uh, so, uh, you will have a different value at different time. So, this time factor is uh, important. Then another factor which cannot be ignored 
is the uncertainty factor because uh, most of the time in case of uh, financial uh, decisions when we talk about the economy uh, you know economical exchanges or economical you know aspects then normally we look into the future we try to neglect what has happened in the past. So, uh, certainly when you talk about the future uh, you do not you cannot say anything with uh, quite a good certainty uh, you know quite with 100 percent of certainty. So, many a times you have uh, the uncertainty involved and uh, without taking uncertainty into the account you cannot say that you are going to have the decisions. Uh, so, there will be uncertainty and uh, these uncertainties are to be uh, taken into account with uh, uh, that because uh, and, and that basically gives you many definitions like or many areas like risk you have risk and uncertainty. So, you have certainly you have risk in the uh, financial uh, uh, area because uh, you do not know what will happen what will be the rate of interest may be after one year uh, if it is variable then what will be have, uh, happening maybe tomorrow or maybe after a week. So, there are these are the uh, uh, you know things we, on which you do not have any control they are the things of, of future and, and uh, you do not have anything which you know with certainty. So, uh, you have the uncertainty factor and that also is uh, taken into account and uh, many a times to um, you know as we do in the um, modeling practices many a times when uh, you have very complex model with uncertainty you try to make it simple by making it deterministic you try to uh, you know uh, say see that uncertainty should not be um, coming that way. So, certainly when you have uncertainty there may be certainty also with decisions. The financial theory develops the concepts and methods for financial problem solution it builds the models of real financial process. So, as we uh, try to analyze these um, uh, problems of finances. So, you will have the concepts suppose you have to predict something though the in that case uh, you will have the methods of uh, the solution you will make uh, certain uh, you know prediction you have certain methods by which uh, you will see that you are getting the solution of that financial problem. And uh, this way the uh, real uh, you know financial processes are being solved and, and for that you are making the models. Now, most of the time uh, uh, these uh, models they are uh, you know uh, using the mathematics. So, uh, that is why they are known as uh, mathematical models. So, that we will come later. Now, basic elements like time, value, risk and criteria. Uh, for choosing that desired distribution of resources obtain a quantitative expression known as models. So, basically what are these models? Now, uh, you have the factors like time, the values like uh, what is are the amount of transactions, how it is, then uh, what is the risk, whether there is risk involved with that. So, you will have probabilistic component coming into it. Then you will have what are the criteria, what are the decision makers, how you are going to decide so, all these things uh, uh, for uh, the distribution of resources they are uh, giving you the uh, you know a quantified expression a an expression and this expression which by which you can basically predict uh, you you uh, uh, how to distribute the resources how to utilize the resources to have maximum or optimum you know uh, output. So, that is basically a model. Now, as we discussed that most of these models when we incorporate uh, or when we intend to have the you know effect of uh, these time or the value of the transaction or the risk or, or, or the criteria is based on certain conditions all these uh, normally have a mathematical character. You have mathematical expressions most of the time and that is why uh, they are uh, known as mathematical models. So, mathematical that is why mathematics uh, you know is playing an important role when you try to study that um, you know concepts because they have certain type of correlations in between them uh, where the mathematical you know terms are used mathematical theories are used and uh, you get those you know output. 
particularly in the modern financial theory. So, they have a marked mathematical character, you have lot of mathematical tools available, you have lot of you know uh, you have new ideas, uh, you have uh, the you know you, you do think that there are many factors which are involved, how to incorporate those factors and every factor might have uh, you know effect in its own way. So, they will uh, they may lead to very complex kind of mathematical relations and which need to be solved, so that uh, uh, you get the output. So, uh, you, you need to have the uh, you know introduction to these mathematical tools, you have to, uh, to know the mathematical concepts, uh, then how these uh, you know uh, with time the things uh, change, suppose interest rate will change or, or there will be other you know uh, uh, if effects like uh, there are many type of transactions where there are uh, mm, the combined effect of the parameters. So, all these uh, can be dealt with uh, with the you know good mathematical tools which are available to us, we have the equipment available to us, good computers available to us. So, you can use them, you can predict and uh, we can certainly do the justice by solving the problems uh, in the way we desire. In a number of cases the uncertainty is uh, neglected either due to stability of conditions in which the uh, decision is made or in idealized situations. So, as we discussed that many a times uh, you know uh, uh, it, it is uh, neglected uncertainty is neglected to um, due to the stability of country because we feel if you take the horizon uh, if you see that um, there may be the stability of conditions in the um, future in the last in, in the larger time horizon. So, in those cases this uh, you know uncertainty is neglected and you can have the you know uh, uh, model as certain. So, you may have the deterministic model or you know what is the outcome coming to be. So, that way or in the idealized situations also. So, in those cases in, in such cases normally what we do is uh, we take this. Uh, uh, so, you will have uh, at those places you will have the deterministic models. So, what we saw that uh, you will have lot of mathematical terminologies uh, which will be coming up uh, in this course you will be dealing with them and uh, you will learn how to use these techniques for the predictions of uh, you know uh, many financial decisions, economic decisions which will be helpful for you and the organization. So, uh, when we talk about these uh, you know mathematical finance then uh, first of all we must be uh, conversant with the basic mathematical you know concepts and uh, uh, for that uh, uh, we know that when we I mean, because in this case mostly we will be dealing with uh, you know these uh, you know com computations you will have the use of numbers. So, if you talk about uh, the you know uh, uh, mathematical uh, you know concepts of the numbers. So, as we know that you have uh, uh, the all the numbers and this slide tells about you tells to you about uh, the numbers. So, suppose you have all the numbers these numbers basically you have either real numbers or unreal numbers that is known as imaginary numbers. Then further you have uh, real numbers are you know categorized as rational numbers and irrational numbers. Then uh, you have uh, the rational number further you have the whole numbers, mixed numbers and fractions and uh, further uh, you have uh, fractions as proper fraction, improper fraction and then you have complex fractions. This is how the, uh, the numbers are uh, you know uh, defined. So, as we, we can see that if you talk about the, so we can start from the uh, you know uh, bottom. So, as we see that you know you have integers first then you have whole numbers that is minus 5 to minus 3 then you have 0, 1, 2. So, that becomes a whole number. So, this is what is the elementary thing. Then uh, most of the time uh, you will be dealing with the fractions and uh, if you talk about the uh, fractions as we know that in the case of fraction you have terminologies like uh, proper fraction. So, proper fraction as we know that, so in the, in the fraction normally you, you uh, uh, 
denote these fractions as a term a by b where b should not be equal to 0. So, a by b is a fraction and we know that a is known as numerator and b is denominator. So, that is how it, it is a, a fraction is defined. Proper fraction is uh, the one where uh, b will be more than a. So, you will have uh, that is known as the proper fraction. Similarly, you will have improper fraction and improper fraction uh, you will have uh, uh, b will be less than a. So, that is uh, uh, improper fraction. So, that is uh, the one. Then uh, apart from that uh, uh, you will have uh, uh, the um, as we discussed that you will have a mixed fraction. So, then you have proper fraction, improper fraction and you have the. So, uh, then you have in those case of complex fraction what is there that uh, you have uh, uh, in the numerator or denominator you have uh, 1 as a fraction. So, suppose 5 by 8 by 13. So, if, if it is uh, one of this is there and then this is he this. So, this is the example of a uh, uh, complex fraction where uh, you have uh, one fraction is there in the case of numerator. So, this is the example of the uh, complex fraction. When we talk about the numbers as you know you have the we discussed about the uh, numbers as whole numbers then you have uh, mixed numbers. So, mixed numbers uh, comes like uh, you 1 3 by 4. So, 1 plus 3 by 4 so that is you have number whole number as well as you have the fraction. So, that becomes as a, um, a mixed number. Then uh, once you go to uh, so th that is what uh, it defines uh, most of the things like whole numbers or so. Now, as you know that rational numbers and irrational numbers we know that uh, a rational number can be uh, you know represented in terms of a by b where b is not equal to 0. Fraction certainly fraction is uh, uh, where you both have uh, a, a and b that is uh, defined and if it is uh, you know if it has a value then it has a defined value then uh, it is uh, you know a real number and if you, you know I mean not a rational number uh, otherwise you have uh, uh, irrational number where you cannot uniquely define uh, um, that is your uh, uh, irrational number. So, some uh, many a times uh, when you take the example suppose uh, you know like uh, uh, you have uh, root 3. So, this uh, comes as the uh, irrational numbers. Now, uh, we talk about the uh, terminology I mean other term things like you have uh, many a times. Now, in this fractions why are they are important? because uh, this will be coming in your um, you know financial terms most often. So, what fraction of something is coming or through things are in this fraction or so or ratios. So, these things will be coming up in this. So, that is why fraction uh, needs to be understood. Then comes the uh, decimals. So, um, as you know that uh, uh, when you are dividing the uh, numerator by the denominator. denominator so, uh, you know you get uh, 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 once you divide and if uh, the quotient is not a you know whole number completely. So, in that case you will have remainder that that remainder. Uh, so, suppose uh, we, we divide uh, uh, 25 by 4. So, basically in this case you get 6 and then uh, plus 1 by 4. So, that is your 24 by uh, 25 by 4. Now, this term uh, is represented in terms of uh, decimals and uh, and that's why you write it as uh, 6.25. So um, that's how this uh, you know we, we when we divide uh, so that's what we get that is so this point is so that's why this that's how we use this uh, term as uh, decimal and uh, you must uh, have a good concept of the use of decimals because uh, you know uh, after decimal how many you know digits appear they are important. Uh, certainly, in the end whatever 0 you put in and that does not matter, but uh, uh, whatever uh, you know uh, digits are coming after decimal that uh, you know they are known as the number of decimal places. So, here in this case you have two number of decimal places. So, that is how uh, we define. Another uh, terminology which will come most often is it is uh, repeatants. Uh, Now, 
uh, repeatants are there that when you many a times when you de uh, divide the numerator with de uh, denominator then uh, in that case uh, when you express it uh, in terms of decimal you will see that that uh, term is uh, repeated perpetually. So, that uh, is a case of uh, repeatants like uh, if you take the example of 1 by 3. So, this uh, if you are trying to express it so it will be 0, 3 3 3 3. So, basically this is the example of uh, uh, repeatant. So, in this case what we see is that the things are uh, repeated uh, uh, continuously and that is why it is known as the uh, repeatant. Then uh, comes something about uh, you know percentages. So, so as you know that when you are expressing something uh, and we are comparing it uh, as compared to 100. So, in, if the, in the denominator you have 100. In those, in those cases we try to tell that uh, we try to you know uh, say that this much of it is the percentage. So, suppose something is 50 out of 100 then we call it as 50 percent. So, so when we basically uh, you know uh, try to denote a fraction which, whose denominator is 100 in that case we talk about the percentage and it is very clear as you know that if it is uh, if you are having the denominator as 60 in that case the, denom the numerator has to be 30. So, that the same percentage is you know uh, represented like then it is 50 percent. So, uh, we discussed about uh, the decimals percentages then there are certainly very elemental uh, elementary you know tricks that you must know that how the decimal points are moved uh, what is uh, how there will be effect when they are when they are to be moved either left or, or towards the right. So, when you are basically multiplying with uh, 100 then it has to move towards uh, the decimal point has to move towards right and if you are dividing it then it has to move towards left. So, all these uh, things are basically the uh, you know um, elemental uh, elementary informations that uh, you are required to know. Then when we talk about the percentages in that case you have a few terms like you have base amount then you will have the percentage rate and then you have percentage amount. So, uh, basically the um, if you try to see that if the base amount is you define it as B and you percentage uh, rate uh, is your R and percentage amount is P. So, what is done is that uh, the base amount will be multiplied with the percentage rate and that will be giving you uh, the percentage amount. So, the expression which will be holding uh, for this it will be P equal to B into R. So, that is how you calculate these uh, uh, percentage amount. Then uh, if one of the things are known you can get uh, the other like if you have to find the base amount and you know the percentage amount and also you know the percentage rate in that case you can find B equal to P by R. So, depending upon those uh, you know whatever you have uh, you know and whatever you have to know. Uh, based on these formulas you can uh, find these uh, you know values of uh, you know a percentage amount rate or percentage amount or you know uh, base amount. Similarly, you have uh, also uh, you must know something about the ratios. So, when we talk about the uh, ratios what we see that we are basically comparing uh, two values. So, if you have two values and you want to compare then we, we are basically presenting in terms of uh, ratios like uh, if you take this uh, uh, any, any room you have length and uh, breadth. So, that can be you know compared in terms of ratios. So, you have uh, so that way we try to uh, uh, have these uh, you know uh, ratios. Then, uh, uh, many a times you have also like A is to B is to C also or uh, you have also ratio of uh, the four numbers like A is to B is to uh, C is to D. So, that way in that case A is to B ratio is there then B is to C is there and C is to D is there. So, those things are basically you know uh, defined 
and that way uh, you will have the calculation of so if you have 100 200 600 and 800 so you will have 1 is to 2 then you have 200 to 600 so it is it will be 3 so like that it will go so 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 that way uh, your ratios are to be uh, you know seen so that we can see that how these are you know uh, defined so that ratios also are used then uh, bef uh, along with that uh, once we read ratio then you have you must have also studied about uh, the terms known as uh, the proportions and here you basically uh, you are uh, having the equality between two ratios so suppose you have uh, a is to a equal to b equal to c equal to d a by b is equal to c by d in that case you write as a is to b and that will be proportional to c is to d so that way uh, this uh, when this concept is used we talk it in terms of the proportions so as you know that here you will have ad by b c equal to bc or what we can see from here also you also can get like a by c equal to b by d so when we talk about the uh, uh, these proportions then uh, in that case these two are known as the um, the means and, and and then you these two uh, are known as the extremes so what we see is that uh, so you can have different type of uh, you know uh, uh, relations like uh, the ratio of the first uh, you know extreme to the so the, the end extreme uh, or for this is the first extreme so uh, and this is the end mean so like that so that will be so, you know uh, first mean to uh, the next extreme uh, end extreme so that way you can have uh, the uh, ratios defined and you can have the formula so these are known as the extremes and these are known as the means so as you see you can have different types of uh, you know uh, formulas which are uh, applicable in that another uh, terminology uh, which is uh, most commonly will be used is you use of ellicotts Now, uh, what is there is that uh, in this case you will have uh, uh, it is any divisor. So, uh, by which uh, uh, when a dividend is applied then in that case uh, you do not have any you know remainder. So, suppose uh, when you know that when you talk about 100 suppose uh, uh, you practically say that uh, it has a fractions if you talk about its uh, factors factors of uh, 100 so you will say that it will be 2 then you will have 4 then you will have 5 then you will have uh, suppose 10 then you will have uh, suppose uh, so 20 and then 50 like that so 250 then uh, uh, 420 then also in between you will have 25 so like that so you will have these are the factors now in this case factor means what that you divide and you get a whole number as quotient and uh, you do not have any remainder. However, if you try to see the you know uh, other there are many other numbers by which if you divide there will not be any remainder like if you say 100 is divided by 16 uh, you know 2 by 3. So, if you look at uh, this now if this uh, will be basically 6. So, here also you get the quotient as a whole number. However, uh, you are uh, having this this is a mixed fraction uh, mixed number and uh, you are dividing this and you are getting that. So, you will have this as the uh, you know uh, these are known as the aliquots of uh, 100. So, so you will have uh, you know in that case similarly you will have many numbers suppose 6 2 by 3. So, so suppose 100 divided by 6 2 by 3. So, if you take that it will be uh, 300 to so it will be 25 no not 25 it will be 100 by 20 by 3. So, 100 into 3 by 20 so it will be 15. So, basically you are getting these quotients as whole number which normally these are the whole numbers and but what the, the divisor this div these are the divisors and these divisors are not basically the whole numbers however, the quotient you are getting as whole number. So, they are the uh, you know uh, different type these they are the different aliquots or uh, they are the ellicots of 100. So, if you talk about uh, the different uh, you know uh, ellicots of 100 you will see that uh, you will have uh, uh, like uh, 33 1 by 3. So, if you divide it the, uh, with that so you will get uh, quotient as 3. So, 33 so if you talk about the ellicot of uh, 100 
you will have helicots as uh, you know you will have helicot as 33 1 by 3 similarly uh, you will also get as 16 2 by 3 we have already seen uh, then you have 14 2 by 7 so that is also one another helicot by which uh, you can have uh, uh, so if you divide it uh, you will get quotient as a whole number so these are the uh, different concepts which are used and they will be used for uh, this so this is uh, what we need to know these are the elementary things we uh, we should know we will also discuss about certain uh, other mathematical terms uh, some functions or so in our uh, next lecture thank you very much